open seats next to you and you're not on the in the middle if you could scoot in we need as much room as we can see firstborn of creation and by him all things were created in heaven and earth seen and unseen rulers dominions and powers and kings he holds all things all things all things together he holds all things all He's the head of the body, the church. Blue skies and rainbows and sunbeams from heaven are what I can see. When my Lord's living in me, I know that Jesus is well and alive today. He makes his home in my heart. Nevermore will I be all alone since he promised me that we never would part. Green grass and flowers all blooming in springtime are works of the master i live for each day i know that jesus is well and alive today he makes his home in my heart never more will i be all alone since he promised me that we never would part tall mountains green valleys the beauty that surrounds me i'll make me aware of the one who made it all i know that jesus is well and alive today he makes his home I'm Jonathan Thomas. I'm the Connections Minister here at Laurel.
and Chris was a dear friend. Welcome, friends and family of Chris Hatchell. It's easy to see how wide and deep the reach of Chris's impact was on this world. It's also easy to see the deep love we all feel for Chris. It was palpable in this room when we all first heard of Chris's diagnosis a year and a half ago. It's been present throughout the past 18 months as we've all rallied behind Chris in his battle. It was evident during both of our services this morning here at Laurel, and I can see it in each and every person who's present this afternoon. Even those of you who didn't know Chris very well, it's evident that he was loved. It's evident that he made an impact. It's evident that he touched our lives. When Chris, Dee Dee, Noah, and, and just Nehemiah, no Nathaniel yet, when they first moved into Knoxville, um, I got to meet them on their first Sunday here. I immediately called my little brother, who was uh, a, a student at Lipscomb at the same time as as Chris. Uh, Chris missed me by uh, a year or two. Uh, he still made it somehow. Um, but I, I called my brother, and I said, tell me, tell me about the Hatchels. And he said, I'll tell you this, you have to get them to stay at your church. You've got to get them there. I'm so glad I listened to my baby brother. So glad. Chris's friendship is one that <laughs> that I'll treasure for the rest of my life. A year or so later, I started planning a mission trip for, I was the youth minister at that time, started planning this mission trip, uh, a short-term service experience for my students. And as I started thinking about this, uh, this trip, these plans, it just made sense that I bring Chris on board because of his, his back, background in uh, long-term missions, because of his training uh, background uh, w with students at Lipscomb for short-term short -term service projects, and because of his experience at Barge. It just made sense. I had no idea what I was getting myself into. I had no idea. From the start, Chris challenged everything. He challenged my approach to short-term service projects. He challenged my budgeting spreadsheet-making abilities. He challenged my philosophies on running. He challenged the reasons that I serve people. And he even challenged my choice of footwear. But I will tell you this. He had my team of high school students more ready than any high school mission team in the history of humankind. We were ready. And then the pandemic hit. But I was so glad that those students got to spend six months planning for Honduras with Chris. Because they got to see the heart of a true missionary. They got to see the heart of a true man of God. They got to see the heart of a family man. They got to see the heart of a true friend. Chris showed my students a lot about life and a lot about Christ. Over the next several years, Chris and I were able to build a bond of brotherhood. We ran dozens of Wednesday evenings together. We had a group of about six, and we would run two by two uh, down the boulevard and then get all the way out, swap out partners, and carry on conversations on the way back up the hill. It was a great way to build a relationship, 
It was a great way to talk about life. It was a great way to just bond. We talked about what it was like to be a dad, what it means to be a husband, what it means to be a brother in Christ, and what God's church should look like in our present world. A lot of deep, meaningful conversations happened on the boulevard on Wednesday nights. Chris had a way of sharpening people just by being around them. And he did that for me. Every effort should be the best, so Chris thought. Every project should be flawless. Every life should be lived with intention. And isn't that what we as Christ followers are called to? To give our best. To do everything in our power to make things perfect. To do all we can to reflect who Jesus Christ was when he was here on earth. And to allow his spirit to shine through. That's what Chris called us all to do. Chris saw maximum potential everywhere. And he had a way of coaxing it out of everyone. Chris wore his heart on his sleeve. And in that, he invited so many people to walk through life with him. This was never more true than when Chris's battle began in October of 2021. In typical Chris and Dee Dee fashion, they made the decision to ask their faith community to join them in their battle, in what lay ahead. In typical Chris fashion, he devised a strategy. He had it all mapped out. And he asked several of us to be prayer warriors for him. My job was to pray specifically for his appetite. been praying every day since October of 2021 not just for Chris to have a desire to eat but for Chris to have a desire to take in as much of the goodness of God as he possibly could and I have no doubt that Chris chose to see the goodness of God even in the darkest of times Because that's who he was. Now, we can proclaim with confidence as part of his faith community that cancer has not won this battle, but the grace of God has prevailed. Because Chris had such a drive for excellence, he was pretty hard on himself. One of the last times that I spoke with Chris, I got to read words from Ephesians chapter 2, and this is what we find there. And you were dead in the trespasses and sins in in which you once walked, following the course of this world, following the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work in the sons of disobedience among whom we all once lived in the passions of our flesh, carrying out the desires of the body and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath like the rest of of mankind. But God, being rich in mercy, because of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, even then he made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. And he raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus so that in the coming ages, he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace in kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by grace, you have been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing. It's the gift of God. 
not a result of works so that no one may boast. For we are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Chris knew. He knew that the grace of God covered him. But he strode with every breath to exude excellence, to reflect the beauty of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. That's who Chris was. Chris decided through his recent surgeries in Pittsburgh that his goal would be to live his life as a testimony to the goodness and greatness of God. And it's because of the goodness and greatness of God that we're assured that Chris has a place with Christ. And now we are all witnesses to the goodness and greatness of God as Chris has lived this testimony. Chris loved praying the Lord's Prayer. He loved praying it aloud with his family. So before we move into a, a time of, of more worship, I'm going to invite you to stand with me and recite the words that are going to come up on the screen. Uh, let's say that this is a, this is a Chris version. It's a, a, an ESV, NIV, KJV mix. We'll call it, for, for this afternoon, we'll call it the KSV. Um, but we're going to say the KSV version of the model prayer together. So let's, uh, let's say uh, the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. May your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours are the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. You can be seated. Let's actually remain standing as we sing. Uh, the songs we're singing this morning... Uh, all have special significance to Chris and Dee Dee and the boys, um, especially in this, this past year. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so.
Good afternoon. Beautiful people. For those I have not met yet, my name is Jason, Christopher's older brother. On behalf of my parents and the entire Hatchell family, we thank you all for being here. Christopher and I had a wonderful childhood where we enjoyed doing the things boys did, playing sports, riding bikes, playing in the neighborhood with the kids until the, street, until the street lights came on, especially catching tadpoles with a rope attached to a five-gallon bucket in the creek that ran behind our house. I can remember the nights when, we, when the adults would stay up and we were sent to bed early. We would lie in bed together listening to the bullfrogs sing in the summer nights. Chris is four years younger than me, which shaped the typical younger brother, older brother dynamic, where he wanted to do everything that I did. And it's a good thing he didn't. He was very observant and knew that, and knew that the, the better, and the, that he knew not better to, to do, or he would end up, not, this would not end up well. You can say that I led by example of what not to do. The Hatchells are a big sports family. Chris and I grew up watching the Tar Heels win ACC championships, NCAA championships, when, <clears throat> when I got there Thursday, I asked Chris if he had a chance to fill out his bracket. He said yes, and I asked, do you have the hills go on, going all the way? Chris looked up at me, gave me that stern look, and nodded yes, as if I even had to ask. As much as we love playing basketball in the backyard and watching it on TV, our true passion was baseball. Chris and I spent countless hours of our childhood at the local baseball field where mom managed the concession stand, dad coached, and Chris and I played nonstop baseball. As I got older, I began taking care of the fields, and of course, Chris wanted to help as well. So I finally let him. One day, I gave him the task of chalking the foul lines. Later that afternoon, after the first set of games were over, and Chris and I were hanging out in the umpire area where, where, we, <clears throat> where we always hung, listening to the recaps of the games. As the games ended, the umpires came off the field. They all had a peculiar look on their face. <clears throat> Bob Blair, which most of you don't know, head umpire came up to me. He said, Jason, are you feeling okay? I said, yes. Why do you ask? He responded, the foul lines are as crooked as a snake. <laughs> Bob, that wasn't me. It was Christopher. From that day on, at the Winter Park Baseball, the Winter Park Baseball family knew Christopher as Snake. <clears throat> <laughs> we, 
We were not always closest growing up, but once we had children, it, se it seemed that we found our way back. A favorite memory of mine is meeting Chris and Noah in Atlanta for a Braves game with Sawyer. It was so special sp spending time with him and our boys. And I remember while I was sitting there, it was a good thing that he didn't become a professional grounds groundskeeper. <laughs> Another favorite memory with my brother, brother which, which may have begun his love for building things, was helping our grandfather build a log cabin in Georgia, nail by nail. After that, my brother always seemed to be tinkering with things, building things from scrap wood laying around the yard. My dad, my dad being quite handy himself, had a large collection of tools and seemed to start having trouble keeping up with them. I can steer, still hear him today. Christopher, where are my tools? My brother loved the ocean. <clears throat> if, the boat, if the boat left the yard, he wanted to be on it. When he left Wilmington for Nashville, he said, the only thing this place is missing is the ocean. One of my, favorite, one of my dad's favorite memories is fishing in the Southport North Carolina tournament with Chris around the age of 12. Anchored up fishing while waiting on a fish to bite. Bored, Chris was sitting in the captain's chair, playing with the keys on the boat, waiting for the fish to bite. All of a sudden, the reels go off. Larry Ham yells, fish on! After the fish is on board and the excitement subsides, it was time to head back to the dock. The captain, David Gord, can't seem to find the keys. <clears throat> it turned, and turns to Chris and says, where are the keys? After turning the boat upside down, searching every possible place, with no, luck, with, with, with no luck, there was only one place they could be, at the bottom of the Atlantic Ocean. <clears throat> in, the, in the excitement of the moment, Chris must have thrown the keys overboard. And the marina had to be called for help to start the boat so they could get back to the dock. So where are my keys became a tagline between family, friends, and Chris. Even just the other day, David called Chris and asked, man, where are my keys? Christopher chuckled. Chris also loved the mountains, from hiking the Appalachian Trail to the Hatchell family, to the, to the Hatchell family trips to Asheville and Beach Mountain, to camping with Dee Dee and the boys in the mountains of Tennessee, being outdoors and hiking and nature brought him so much joy. When we asked Sawyer yesterday what was something he'd like to say about his uncle, without hesitation, we're not campers, the response he had was the time that he, we went camping with Noah and Nehemiah, spending time sleeping in the camper and cooking an open fire. Thank you, Christopher, for that experience. He also found joy in two in the, he also found joy in the two of us meeting in the North Carolina mountains to play golf. The most joyful part was for him was he finally found a sport that he could beat me at. <clears throat> As the family was sitting around sharing our favorite Christopher memories, Uncle Alan brought up the time when he and Aunt Judy were in Wilmington. Chris mentioned that he, he was in jeopardy of losing his pilot license because he hadn't flown in enough hours lately. Uncle Alan had an idea. Chris, rent a plane, let's go up. So that's what they did. Up they went, flying around Riceville Beach, enjoying the view. Well, if you've ever met our Uncle Alan, you won't be surprised by this story. With he and Chris in the front and Judy in the back, Alan asked Chris if he could mess with Judy by a bit by taking the controls. Chris agreed, and after a sudden nosedive, Aunt Judy was not happy. <clears throat> I can't tell you some of the words that came out of her mouth, but you can fill in the blanks. Another time, Mom agreed to go up with Chris. However, she does not fly. As they were about to take off, Chris radios a traffic control to get clear for takeoff and informed them he was going to go up on what could be the record for the shortest flight. They took off and immediately landed, <laughs> about 90 seconds, basically about the same time the first Wright brothers flight. Chris was a true renaissance man. He built a cabin, he rebuilt a tractor, he could fly a plane, a plane an avid runner that, that ran a triathlon, triathlon. He even delivered a baby, his second child, Nehemiah. <clears throat> you like that one? <laughs> he even helped 
to bring running water to an entire Guatemalan community. We may not have always been close, but we have always been a team. Our family is an amazing team. I couldn't have dreamed of a better sibling to grow up with, look up to, learn from, and love. I will do my best to live in Chris's memory and be there for Didi and the boys at all times. I will leave you with this, a motto of our family once Chris was diagnosed with cancer. One day at a time, and we stand together. Thank you. freshman year I got to know them and then it was my privilege to introduce my friend Dee Dee to Chris and to watch a really beautiful love story unfold and um, I got to tell Chris recently that as I'd been reflecting on my friendship with him over the years that the word that just kept coming to mind was brother that's what he has been to me he even played a prank on me that day in the hospital I'm not kidding yeah, I'll tell you about it later, but it was, I was just like, this, yes, this has been our friendship. He just pulled another one. So um, I, I was thinking about, JT, what you said about Chris's planning. I, when I think about him, I think of him being so organized. He was the first person I'd ever seen fold his socks. It's like, who does that? That was amazing. Um, but even immediately after the diagnosis, his first thought was for Dee Dee and the boys. And so he looked at several of us girls and made us promise to take care of her. That was his first thought. And uh, we're, you are not going to walk this alone. And we're, we're keeping that promise to Chris. So, what do you want to say? Uh, I married into the uh, into the group of Caleb and Sarah Beth and Dee Dee and Chris. Um, and as Hope said, he was a brother fast. And uh, we, we mentioned that he wore his emotions on his sleeve. One of our favorite things to do as couples was to worship. 
Um, and while Chris might not have been able to keep the tune, he sang with gusto. He sang with gusto. <laughs> but but he worshipped in spirit and in truth. And uh, so some of you may not know this song, but we're going to ask you to. Uh, I think you'll pick it up pretty quickly. Um, this is a song, I think the last time after we had picked up the boys to go hiking, we came back to the house and uh, we were talking about this song and, and just how we, our kids loved to sing it. And, uh, and so we, we sat down to the piano in their house and sang it. So if you guys would join us in uh, just declaring that Jesus is strong and kind. Jesus said that if I thirst, I should come to him. No one else can satisfy, I should come to him. Jesus said if I should come to him. No one else can be my strength. I should come to him. For the Lord is good and faithful. He will keep us day.
breath for all of us. Uh, my name's Mark McKinney. Um, if you've read Chris's story and it starts to talk about the old Pond Valley, that's kind of where our lives begin to intersect. Um, and honestly, I didn't realize until I started preparing for this how much uh, our careers and lives have kind of orbited around each other for the past decade. Um, I met Chris in 2011. Um, uh, this was uh, after he had begun the engineering missions program at Lipscomb, and he and Kevin, Hatt, Kevin Colvett were uh, beginning to prepare to live in Guatemala and build water systems, and they were recruiting engineering firms. Um, and so I was told to host a dinner for these two guys I'd never met before in Knoxville and uh, um, introduce them to all the people in Knoxville. I'm an engineer as well with Chris. Um, so we hosted a dinner, and I met Chris that night, um, having no idea how much my life would change as a result of that. Um, but uh, as a result of that meal and learning about the opportunities in Guatemala, um, a bunch of us caught a vision for what Chris and Kevin were doing, and we started a nonprofit here in Knoxville um, that's been going ever since. And Chris got to serve on the board of that after he moved back to town, or not back to town, to Knoxville. Um, um, but that following spring, uh, we ended up on a trip in Guatemala with Chris uh, and uh, learning about the ministry that they were doing and preparing for a, a group here in Knoxville to go and, and build one of the water systems that they were working on. Um, Chris and Kevin were like, hey, we, we need another engineer if you know anybody to come down. And Kevin was only going to stay for a year. Chris and Didi were staying for at least two at that point. And uh, uh, God kind of spoke to my heart in the midst of that through Chris and Kevin, and uh, um, I came home and walked in the door after leaving my wife and four young kids at home and said, hey, you want to move to Guatemala? <laughs> and she said something, no. Um, <laughs> and uh, I said, well, let's, let's pray about this and see what happens. And uh, long story short, that was February uh, we moved to Guatemala on July 26th of that year. <laughs> um, and we moved into a house with Chris and Didi and a, a whole bunch of Guatemalan friends. Um, and uh, it, it's hard to explain what kind of living on the side of a mountain in Guatemala with somebody will do that crucible with very little privacy, to be quite honest. Um, my wife's favorite story from that time is uh, doing their morning business on the five-gallon buckets, but there was no roof. Our bathrooms were separate, but there was no roof, and she and Chris would always greet each other every morning. <laughs> um, and that was the kind of life we lived. And um, I don't know, I was too young at the time, uh, too little life experience. Uh, we became brothers and sisters in a way that we just can't really explain anymore, but it's very true. Um, so since Guatemala, that, that time, I mean, I, what JT was talking about, uh, Chris's intensity was almost off-putting when we moved in. <laughs> um, we didn't really know how to deal with him. We hadn't grown up with him. <laughs> um, but I quickly began to understand his intensity was really a tenacity for everything that he did. Um, and, and Katie and I grew, Katie's my wife, we, we grew to love his passion for life and his tenacity for all that he did. Whether it was making a spreadsheet or beating some poor supplier of pipe down in Guatemala for the best price he could possibly get for one of the communities we were working with, to him scooting off on a dirt bike with Dee Dee's hair flying behind her, <laughs> trying to grab on to, for dear life, to all of us piling into what car we had, um, and really them helping us raise our kids for a year. Um, we would not have made it without their help. And they, to this day, don't know how much they kept us really alive through that time. Um, but anyway, our careers since Guatemala have continued to orbit around each other. Um, Chris started out in mechanical engineering, but after our experience in Guatemala, decided he wanted to do water work. Um, and when we came back to Knoxville, they came back to Nashville, he started working at Barge Design Solutions um, and uh, learned the water business. Um, and uh, about halfway through his tenure there, they, they decided to move to Knoxville, which we were absolutely elated with. 
um, we quickly began to have monthly family dinners with the Hatchels, and uh, we had kept up with each other, but our, our friendship continued to really grow over the last five years of getting together once a month and uh, talking about work and talking about life um, and all the things that you've heard about Chris's friendship and brotherhood um, have been true. Um, about last year, I, I had an opportunity to actually join Barge. So um, uh, a day I won't ever forget after interviewing with Barge, um, which is a very long process, um, the, the happened to be the day that I had gone to, to, with Chris to chemo. Um, and as we got back in the car, I got a call from the, the CEO at Barge. And he said, hey, do you have a second? <laughs> and I said, yeah. And I said, I'm with Chris right now. And, and he goes, well, is it okay to talk? And I said, if you can say it in front of Chris, you can say it in front of me. Like I, and, uh, and he offered me the job that day uh, with Chris sitting in the car with me. And Chris's smile that day was really big. Um, <clears throat> sorry. We got to share a moment of dreaming about working together and... It's really good, really, really good. Um, Chris's work, uh, like everything he did, was excellent. Um, our CEO, Bob Higgins, wrote a little memory to him, and, and these were his words for Chris. Chris was not only an excellent engineer, but also a compassionate human being who cared deeply for others. He was the recipient of our first ever Honey Badger Award, which recognizes employees who go above and beyond their duties to make a positive impact on all of us. I don't know that I can think of a better mascot for Chris than a honey badger. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly needs to be the Hatchel mascot if you don't already have one. Um, just sums up so many things so well. Um, uh, Bob continued, Chris was loved by many of his colleagues and clients who called his service barge magic for his ability to deliver outstanding results and solutions. He was a mentor and a friend and a leader to many of us, and he always brought joy and enthusiasm to his work. Um, at Barge, I'm really proud. We have a value statement, which we call the CARES model. Um, CARES is an acronym for Collaborate, Authentic, Responsible, Excellence, and Service. Chris really embodied all of those values uh, in his work, in his life, uh, with his friends. Uh, he collaborated. He always made a team better. He challenged everybody to be their best. Um, Authentic kind of describes Chris. Um, if you ever got that look where he tucked his chin and looked at you, it was like, I'm about to be authentic and you better be too. <laughs> um, there was just an honesty with him um, that he lived his life with. Uh, that was really great. Uh, responsible, we've talked about excellence. Everything he did, he held to the highest standard. Um, and service, uh, he served people always um, in everything that he did. Um, can't really talk about Chris without talking about Jesus and about faith. Uh, in Hebrews 11, 1, it says, Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. For by the people of old received their commendation. By faith we understand the universe was created by the word of God, so that what is seen was not made out of things that are visible. By faith, and chapter 11 goes on to talk about all the saints from the Old Testament who lived by faith. And in chapter 12, it says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. Chris, Dee Dee, family, you all showed us an amazing faith over the last 18 months. I can't tell you how many people have talked to me about just the Caring Bridge site and how you all have shown us your faith. Uh, it's been a true testimony to God's greatness. Um, I can attest to that being present long before, um, more so than just in the last 18 months, uh, through all of my experience with the Hatchels. Um, Chris is now a part of that great cloud of witnesses. Um, and uh, I'm no theologian, so I won't speak to exactly how all this works, but um, what happens between crossing over the veil of this life and the glory to come, I just know that if any angels are behind on any of their projects, they might be in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> I, 
I can't imagine what Chris will do with a sanctified body and all the resources of heaven, but I suspect everything will be on time from here on out. Um, I think Jesus said he didn't even get to know what day uh, he would get to come back. But I would guess Chris is going to push that up just a bit for the rest of us. <laughs> um, I expect uh, that he's enjoying himself. Um, as an image bearer of Christ, Chris, help me to understand the determination and tenacity of our God. Um, being his friend really instructed my heart just how much Jesus loves me. Um, <clears throat> how determined Jesus was to save me. Um, I read the Gospels in a new light, seeing Jesus' single purpose towards the cross and our salvation because I had a friend who showed me that same tenacity. I'm very thankful for my time with Chris. Um, as I said earlier, I didn't realize how much my life has been changed by him, but it wouldn't have looked at all the same over the last 10 years if our lives hadn't intersected. I hope each one of us can walk away today with a little dose of tenacity um, to do the things we know in our hearts that we must do in Chris's honor. Uh, I praise God uh, that Chris was so determined to love and serve uh, my family and myself. Uh, I hope that we will tenaciously pursue the cross so that we and Chris can know the full and abundant life of eternity. Thank you so much. This song uh, uh, was special to Chris and, and speaks to the courage to follow God's call that he so well demonstrated. Let's stand and sing. <clears throat> Father, hear the prayer we offer, nor for ease that prayer shall be. But for strength that we may ever live our lives courageously. Be our strength in hours of weakness. In our wanderings be our guide. Through
should come. Let his blessed assurance control that Christ hath regarded my helpless estate and hath shed his own blood for my soul. This is my dad's favorite song, Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Your, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Well, it's hard to believe that Chris has been my friend for half my life. That's over 20 years. We both, turn, we both turned 40 this year. He was a good man and a great friend. And to me and to many others, uh, he was like a brother to me. In The Lord of the Rings, 
Bilbo says, it's a dangerous business, Frodo, going out your door. You step onto the road, and if you don't keep your feet, there's no knowing where you might be swept off to. And that's what it was like to be Chris's friend. <laughs> he dreamed big dreams, and he loved for you to dream with him. And his dreams were infectious, and then he would start to plan and make things happen, and then before you knew it, suddenly you'd find yourself on top of a mountain somewhere. And some of those were actual mountains, like when he pulled me up Mount Unaka during his long trek on the Appalachian Trail, or took me to the top of a mountain in the Old Pond Valley. Some were project mountains, like his crazy idea to actually build a bridge in Guatemala for our senior design project or to start a, C a Center for Engineering Missions at Lipscomb. Some were grand adventures, like uh, moving to Tullahoma for the summer with a nerdy kid he didn't really know yet uh, who listened to instrumental banjo music all the way, <laughs> or proposing marriage to Dee Dee on our backpacking trip to Virgin Falls, or getting his pilot's license. Uh, he took me up once and I really almost fainted. I had real trouble. <laughs> He had, to, he had to land early. You're not the only one, okay? <laughs> uh, or moving to rural Guatemala to serve people and create clean water infrastructure. Or starting a new chapter in Knoxville. Or buying farmland and working to improve it. Running half Ironman triathlon. Or literally renovating an old tractor in between chemotherapy rounds. Uh, even now, there's a group camping trip uh, on the calendar that Chris took the initiative to dream up and plan in the last few months. Now, uh, sometimes to my chagrin, uh, Chris succeeded in many of these endeavors because he really valued organization and preparedness. Those are not my strong points. Um, when camp, once when camping with the Hatchels, uh, I ran our minivan out of battery by leaving the door open too long and using the outlet to pump our leaky air mattresses. And the next day we were headed out to a waterfall with all the kids and my van wouldn't start and I didn't have jumble ca cables, uh, I didn't even know where they would be, um, or a charger. So I sheepishly ran and flagged Chris down as he was circling. And of course, he had his charger, he knew exactly where it was, he had his cables, they were packed and organized, and uh, he came and expertly jumped our van off. And, uh, but then he got back in his own car, and he took this opportunity to communicate a life lesson to the boys. As he got back in the van, he said, loudly enough for all of our children to hear, <laughs> see boys, this is why you always come prepared. So one, one takeaway from today is that Chris would encourage all of you to carry your own jumper cables. <laughs> uh, another thing that I truly loved about Chris was his ability to brighten a situation and make us all laugh, uh, often at his own expense by doing or saying something silly or just making one of his uh, great funny faces, uh, like the wide-eyed stare or the toothy mischievous grin and I can see some of those same faces in these, in these front rows here. Uh, I love that he could always get a big laugh out of Didi. So for all his seriousness and preparedness and planning, he didn't take himself too seriously. It was so heartwarming to see him often joking with the medical caretakers uh, in, in, when he was in recovery uh, in Pittsburgh for two surgeries. Um, he always made everyone smile and made everyone's day better, and the nurses and, and doctors loved to, to interact with him. And these times uh, also highlighted another of Chris's unique traits that I loved, um, his wonderful sincerity and earnestness, which we've heard some of today. If Chris had a mind to say something important to you, he would draw you in close and speak directly to you with unbroken eye contact, the most meaningful words of encouragement, gratitude, perhaps a promise, a dream, a request to do something for someone he loved. And may we all follow through on those words. Uh, as is mentioned, Chris was a challenger, uh, but he was also very encouraging in his challenging. Uh, he came at you and he pushed you to do good and to be better. Uh, the last time we ran together was uh, last summer on the Greenway behind church, uh, back here, and we got to that last long, steep hill 
uh, that comes up from the Greenway up to the Laurel parking lot. And I've always thought that running that hill is sort of optional. Um, <laughs> and uh, I was suggesting that we walk it in both for my sake and for Chris's. And he was having none of that uh, and said, no, we're running this thing, let's go. And he pushed me up that hill to the top, lactic acid burning all the way. And I could just only shake my head and, and think, this is so Chris. And uh, so I, I want you boys to know, whenever I hear you say, let's go, I, I, uh, your, your dad's right there with us. I'll read from Romans 8, 35. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither life nor death, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Jesus our Lord. Chris's life was joined to the love of God that is in Jesus Christ, and nothing can separate him from that love. We're going to sing uh, There is a Habitation next. Um, for the boys and girls, uh, habitation means home. Uh, the imagery in this song is from Revelation, which describes the new heaven and the new earth, and the new home, a city that comes down to earth for all nations, where God dwells among the people, wiping every tear from their eyes, where there will be no more war or disease, death or crying or pain, for he is making everything new. In this city, the river of the water of life flows through the streets from the throne of the Lamb, and the tree of life sits on its banks for the healing of the nations. Chris believed and put into practice the biblical theme of God calling humans to participate in this reign of love in advance, here and now, to bring peace and justice and wholeness to creation and to all nations. Chris did this by being transformed by Jesus and walking in his footsteps. He showed me what it looks like to work for this kingdom, to help dream it and plan it and build it, and along the way to be a good friend in a million small ways. In faith, it is my great hope that Chris will continue to plan and build and serve as an architect of the new creation. I hope that when we meet again, he will show me the new aqueducts he has designed for the water of life and tell me about his plans for our next adventure. Let's stand and sing. There is a habitation built by the living God for all of every nation who seek that grand abode. Oh, Zion, Zion, I long thy gates to see. Oh, Zion, Yeah.
I and the boys and Chris's family and my own are humbled that you would choose to join us today in remembering and honoring Chris and his beautifully lived 40 years of life. As you know and have heard, his life and death and his assured life after death is truly a testimony to the Lord's goodness and greatness. And as JT said, although we mourn that he lost his earthly battle with cancer, we rejoice that his eternal victory was already won. I was so blessed to live part of that journey with him and to witness how his love and passion for and service to Christ, to us, his family, and to our communities, local and afar, has blessed the world in a way that will last into eternity. Truly, God's kingdom come. When I asked the boys what their best memories with Daddy were, they spoke of camping and fishing, and I certainly share fondness for those memories, pledging to continue them with the boys in his honor. When I think of Chris, I think of his faithfulness as my helpmate, a true picture of Christ's love for and loyalty to the church. He truly loved me from the beginning, perhaps even before I acknowledged my own feelings for him, and to the end in countless ways, prioritizing me and my needs as his bride again and again, even in the midst of his illness and suffering. I will forever hold him in my heart, and I'm confident that the boys will carry on his legacy of passion and determination and service in Jesus' name. I must close with much gratitude, for we have truly been overwhelmed by God's provision through so many gifts and love offerings over the past year and a half. I want to thank Chris's family for walking with me on this journey, for staying by his side constantly, especially when I had to step away. He had so many sweet moments with them in his last days, and it was beautiful to witness. And of course, a thank you to my own parents and my brother and their overflowing endless love and support to me, Chris, and the boys. Thank you to literally countless other family and friends for food, finances, help with the boys, and so many thoughtful words along the way. I'm thankful for our extended Guatemalan family, for the ways they've loved Chris and helped to shape his passion for missions and civil engineering, and for their faithful prayers for him. I'm thankful to all the doctors and nurses who served and cared for him over the past year and a half. Thank you to Barge Design Solutions and their full support while Chris navigated surgeries and disability and withdrawing from his work responsibilities to be able to focus on his recovery. I and the boys pledge to carry on that honey badger spirit. <laughs> Thank you to our Lipscomb, Nashville, and Lebanon families who have loved and supported us in various ways from afar. Thank you to my closest friends, my small group, my Bible study ladies, and many faithful followers of our Caring Bridge posts who have prayed so faithfully over the past year and a half and have truly been God's everlasting arms.
have truly been God's everlasting arms holding me up when my knees began to feel weak. We have been so blessed. For the past year or so, Noah has prayed every day or night, please bless those who have blessed us through Daddy's cancer. And that is our prayer for each of you. Uh, Chris's blessing that he spoke over the boys every night. That the Lord would bless you and keep you. That his face would shine upon you. That he would turn his face toward you and give you peace. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and give you peace and give you peace and give you peace forever. The Lord be gracious to you. Didi, that support is not just there through Chris's battle. That support continues. Um, boys, it's natural to be sad. It's natural to be angry. It's natural to feel a lot of emotions. And I want you to know that your faith community is here to be with you. Your family is here to support you. Church, say amen if you agree to support the Hatchels. We're here for you, and we love you. At this time, we want to dismiss the family so that they can head on downstairs and uh, start uh, gathering their food. So family, uh, you are all dismissed right now. There is a dinner to follow our time together. We will be in the gym downstairs. That's to the, to the west, to uh, down this hallway as you head out of our worship center. I've got a few instructions for, uh, for everyone to know so that we can understand uh, what's ahead of us. The first thing I'm going to ask is, as the family gets their food, as they are, are at the table uh, trying to, to finish their meal, please honor their time to, to be together and, uh, and finish eating, and, and then allow them to process uh, what's happened in this room, and, and then they will, as they feel comfortable, uh, move from where they are to, uh, to join you, and, and then as you see the family get up and move uh, maybe make that your cue to, uh, to, to approach them and, and share your condolences with them. Thank you so much to those of you who have driven for hours today to be here to show the Hatchels your support. We appreciate you and, uh, and we thank you for showing them your care, for showing them your love. There are some wonderful opportunities for us to express to the Hatchels what we feel. Um, there's a, a room that's set up downstairs directly across from the gym. There's a backdrop set up with a place for you to send video messages to them. Those are going to be compiled over the next several weeks. 
so that the boys can have some memories of what you remember about Chris. You can share funny stories there. You can share what Chris, uh, what kind of impact Chris had on your life in, in front of that camera. But uh, that, that is there. We've got a couple of volunteers that are in place ready to, to help you if you're not technologically savvy. Um, there's also going to be some materials set up at each table um, so, some cards, some card stocks, some markers. Uh, you can write some notes to the Hatchels, to the boys, to Dee Dee, to the extended family if you would like to do that. So that's going to be available for you in our gym. Um, the playground is going to be open. So that is uh, this courtyard right here. It's right out the gym doors. So if you've got children or if you just want to, to stretch your legs and get some fresh air, there's a nice patch of grass out there. Um, and, and you can take advantage of that area. If you dropped your kids at childcare, please remember on your way downstairs to pick your kids up. <laughs> Let me see if I'm missing anything else. What we're going to ask for everybody to do, we, we've got stairs all the way down the hallway. So go all the way down the hallway to, uh, to my right. I guess it's some of your left. Um, go down that way to, to uh, head to the gym. There is an elevator if you need to use the elevator to get downstairs. Um, let's pray over the food right now, and then I'll dismiss you. Thank you again for being here. God, we feel your presence even in the midst of a sad time. God, we feel your presence because your community has made it evident that you are here. God, we pray for comfort moving forward. We pray that memories of Chris will stick with us, challenge us, help us to be the people that we're called to be in Christ. God, we're thankful for the food that we're about to eat. We're thankful for all those who have volunteered to bring food out so that we can enjoy a meal together. Be with us as we continue to honor the life of a wonderful man who served you well. We pray this because of Christ, through your Spirit. Amen. You're dismissed. to Jesus.